we will review sixth grade math lesson 2.1. This lesson will cover how to interpret rational numbers. Here's your I can statement. I can find and use absolute values in the opposite of a number to solve real world problems and explain it to others. Let's review some vocabulary. The vocabulary for today will be rational numbers, and opposites. We already know what absolute value means from a previous lesson. Remember, absolute value is the distance to zero. So rational numbers here are all decimals, fractions, and integers. Integers are whole numbers, positive and negative and zero on the number line. Opposites have the same absolute value and opposites are the same distance from zero on a number line but in different directions. So if you can see from the example here that negative one and a half and one and a half are opposites because each number is one and a half units from zero on the number line. So the absolute value of a rational number, remember, is the distance from zero on a number line and opposites always have the same absolute value. All right, let's look at a few problems. These um, problems that we go over today will be similar to, if you want to look at your homework, problems on page 35. It says graph each number on a number line. So here's step one. We need to find out what the opposites are of each number before we can graph them. So if I have negative 2 and 3 fourths, the opposite of that number is going to be a positive 2 and 3 fourths. If I have a negative 8 tenths, the opposite will be a positive 8 tenths. If I have 1 and 25 hundredths, the opposite will be a negative 25, 1 and 25 hundredths. Between what two integers are the numbers? That's going to be step two. So if we can see here that negative 2 and 3 fourths is between negative 2 and 3 and positive 2 and 3 fourths is between 2 and 3. So here's our number here. But it's between the negative 3 and the negative 2 on the number line. And then if you look here at the positive 2 and 3 fourths, that as well is between 2 and 3. Eight tenths is between 0, 1, and negative 8 tenths is between negative 1 and 0. So let's look at that on the number line. If I have negative 8 tenths, tenths here and positive eight tenths. It falls between a negative one and zero or a zero and a positive one for positive eight tenths. Then the last example they have here is negative one and twenty-five hundredths is between negative two and one and one and twenty-five hundredths is between one and two. So if we look at that here, that number is right there. So you can see where that falls on the number line and how it, if we know and can locate the integers, it's the number falls between, it's much easier to graph. Okay, then we have step three. Plot and label the points on the number line. And I just showed you how to do that. Okay, let's go down here. Question one. This gives us two directions. We must graph each number and find the opposite of each number. 
So if I have two tenths, so if I over here have two tenths, the opposite of two tenths is negative two tenths. And that is going to fall between zero and one and zero and negative one on the number line. If you see the tick marks here represent tenths. So if I put two tenths here, and then here's negative two tenths. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one is going to be one and three tenths. So the opposite of that is a negative one and three tenths. That number will fall in between one and two or negative one and negative two. So if I have one and three tenths here, and here I have negative one and three tenths. Okay, then I have eight tenths. The opposite of eight tenths is negative eight tenths, and that's gonna fall between zero and one and zero and negative one. So I have eight tenths here, that's positive eight tenths, and over here I have eight tenths. And then the last one is 7 tenths. And then the opposite of 7 tenths is a negative 7 tenths, and that's going to fall between 0, 1, and negative 1. That's going to go right here next to the 8 tenths. And this one, negative 7 tenths. All right, let's go to the next one. Find the opposite and the absolute value of each number. So make sure we're finding the opposites and the absolute value. We have to really read the problems here. We're finding the opposites and we're finding the absolute value. And one thing to remember that opposites have the same absolute value. We reviewed that over here before. Okay, so 7 tenths, the opposite of 7 tenths is a negative 7 tenths. I mean 7 elevenths, sorry. Let's do opposites first. The opposites of negative 5 and 17 hundredths is a positive 5 and 17 hundredths. The opposite of 1 and 1 fourth is a positive 1 and 1 fourth. The opposite of 68 hundredths is a negative 68 hundredths. And negative 8 and 3 fourths, the opposite is a positive 8 and 3 fourths. And then if I have 5 ninths, the opposite is a negative 5 ninths. Okay, let's work on the absolute value now. We know, because it already stated, that the absolute value is going to be the same for the opposites. So I know that the absolute value of 7 tenths, if I do it over here, 7 elevenths, sorry, or the absolute value of negative 7 elevenths, it's both going to be 7 elevenths. The absolute value is the same. Same if I do here for 68 hundredths. If I have the absolute value of 68 hundredths, that's going to be 68 hundredths. And the absolute value of a negative 68 hundredths is 68 hundredths. That is our lesson for Module 2, Lesson 1, Grade 6.